Hey class, Ms. Arrells here to talk about how to download and use Google Meets. So the first thing that you're gonna do is download Google Meets. And so the way that you would do that is to go into the App Store. And the app that you're looking for is actually called Hangouts Meet by Google. So that's one that we're gonna be using for school. So make sure that you download that app. The icon should look something like this. Um, if you already have it downloaded, great. If you're not able to get through the App Store, then you could probably download it through self-service. Um, so make sure that you have the app downloaded. Probably how you're going to get the link to most of your Google Meets through School is going to be um, through a link right through Schoology. So I'm going to open up my Schoology page. And I will show you an example test one that I made up. So I'll go into my ramp class. I'll go down to Google Meet test. And so what you want to do with this is you're probably, so if I post a Google Meet link and it looks like this, it's because Google Meets doesn't work through the Schoology browser. So all you're going to have to do for this is click on this button down here in the bottom right. So if I click on that right now, I'm going to open this up in Safari. Uh, you can open it up in the browser that you prefer. It just won't work in the Schoology browser, but I would recommend opening it up in Safari on your iPad here. Uh, the first thing that you're going to do, so we have, we have video right here. Um, I will click join meeting. So your screen should look something like this after you've joined the meeting. Um, is there are a couple really important buttons that we should go over. So the first ones are the uh, microphone button right here and the video button right here. And so what I would recommend doing, first of all, is turning off both of these buttons. Um, the reason for that is because if we do a large scale Google Meet, it's going to be difficult if everybody has their microphone on and has their video on. Uh, it could get a really noisy and really hard to communicate and talk. So my recommendation is if you're not an active participant, as in you're not actively speaking, I would probably turn off the uh, microphone and the video buttons right here. Um, some other buttons that are going to be really important as we go through Google Meets are gonna be up in the upper right corner here. So for example, the closed captioning button right here, I can click on that and that would provide a closed caption of uh, whoever is speaking during the video. So that would be really helpful if you'd like to see text as the person who's talking is, is actually speaking. Um, you can also go to this button right here um, which will give a list of all of the active participants in their status with like video and microphone uh, up here in the right corner. You can click on the text box that's right to the right of that and that'll start a, a text chat which is going to be really helpful if we do for example like a like a lab checkoff and maybe you have a question um, but you don't feel like uh, and you probably shouldn't interrupt the person that's speaking and so you could even with your mic muted uh, just type a question. Um, I know that on my end I'll do my best to make sure that I'm constantly checking this. It would be probably good practice though if, if it looks like we're in a part of, of the any sort of discussion where questions are welcome to maybe unmute your microphone and just mention, hey, Mr. Wells, the comment box is starting to fill up with some questions. Could you look take a look at that? Because sometimes as, a, as the active speaker, that can be, uh, that could be difficult to, to manage. So, and then I'll take a look at the questions and that would be a great way to uh, just throw up a question. It won't interrupt the meeting uh, and then we'll get to it when we get to it basically. Um, so that's how I would recommend that, making sure that, you know, that would be a good way to communicate while also having your microphone muted, the video muted uh, and everything else. The last thing we'll talk about is up in the right corner, the top right corner, this triple set of dots right here. I'll click on that. So that pulls up another menu of options. The most important uh, of which is gonna be the present screen button right here. Uh, what this is gonna do is actually not just present your face and your audio, but it'll actually present your iPad screen or your computer screen. And you'll be able to show me or the audience who's watching the video uh, what you're working on directly on your screen. So that's going to be really helpful. I think especially during one-on-one -on -one interactions, uh, if you have a question that needs maybe some, maybe a chemical equation or something that needs a little bit of extra uh, emphasis or needs me to see uh, so that I can help you with your annotations or your, your equations or drawings or diagrams, um, that's going to be the button to click so that I can actually see or a viewer can actually see what it is that is on your iPad screen rather than just your face. Um, 
I think as far as basic messaging, this is going to be the way to do it. So you just make sure you pay attention to the Schoology links. Uh, always let me know if you have any problems. And then when you're ready to drop out, the way you would end a call is just by clicking the uh, end call button right here. Uh, you should have an option to be able to rejoin and everything else. All right, class, that's Google Meets. So just know that uh, if you're having any difficulties with this, let me know through questions, uh, comments, email, really anything, any way that you think would be best to reach me, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Just know that this is the first time that we've ever used a program like this. I know that this will be the first time that I've ever taught through a program like this, and so there is going to be some, I would assume there's going to be some problems, um, at least the first couple times around. So be patient with it. Uh, make you know, I will try to archive videos as best as possible so that if we ever miss like a lab checkoff or a meeting like that, then uh, we'll have quick access to it. And if we're doing virtual office hours, just have some patience with uh, getting up and running. And uh, I think we should be good to go. It's actually a pretty intuitive and easy program. Make sure you're logged into your school account. And I think uh, that should do it. See you later.